Introduction to Theology, a Pentecostal Perspective After Jesus rose from the grave, he appeared to his disciples and 500 other people who saw him. And he told them, Do not leave Jerusalem until my Father sends you the gift, the promised Holy Spirit, or Holy Ghost. In other words, he told his disciples to fast and just pray fervently, intensely, day and night. This would have to be like a lot of people in this building just praying and praying and praying, basically asking God to reveal himself, to give them the gifts that they were told to wait for. And when that happened, suddenly an outpouring from heaven just opened up and just poured through these disciples, these followers of Jesus. And they started praying and speaking in tongues, tongues of men and uh, who knows, tongues of not human tongues. And suddenly people in that region started to hear their own languages being spoken, praising the God and telling people uh, about Jesus and about the forgiveness of sins and repenting and so on and so forth. And there were numerous people, I think it was about 3,000 or thousands of people who, were, who received Jesus and became followers that very day. Uh, Peter was the one who was preaching at the time. Be baptized, be saved, and repent of your sins, and receive the Holy Spirit. And some people throughout the book of Acts have not even heard of the Holy Spirit uh, being baptized in the Holy Spirit, whereas other people have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Those are two different things. Uh, where you're filled with the Holy Spirit is if I had a glass, a uh, cup of water, or just a glass, I would pour water into that cup. That's what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's more of the idea of, I'm guessing, the Baptists teach. Whereas being baptized with the Holy Spirit means you're submerging that very cup in water. So in and out and through it all, the, the, you're soaked in the Holy Spirit. So Pentecostal theology has to deal with the following, the leading of the Holy Spirit. We're not going off our own understanding. We're kind of following, kind of, we are following the Holy Spirit's leading wherever it's guiding us and teaching us about who He is. Uh, there's a lot of misconception about what the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost is. The Holy Spirit, it's not an it. He's not a force. No, he is a person. That is what we're teaching when we talk about the following of the Holy Spirit, Pentecostal theology. We're talking about this being a person. He has emotions. There's tes uh, testimonies in the Old Testament that talks about your father's grieved my spirit. And in the New Testament, who God who Jesus reveals who God and the Spirit is. He talks about, do not grieve me like your fathers have grieved me in the in the past days. where They resisted my spirit. Uh, they resisted me, right? So he's a person. He is part of God. He's not, he's a part of God, but he also is God. He's not just an idea. He's not any lower than God. He is God himself. There are many verses that show that he is claiming himself as being God. And when we talk about God, the Trinity, we also aren't talking about someone who's three gods. We don't believe in three gods, but we believe God is, he reveals himself in three different distinct people. For instance, I'm a father. I have a role as a father for my kids, right? That's how I have a relationship with him. But I'm also a husband. And that's how I have a relationship with my wife. But I'm also a friend or a coworker. Or employee or employer, and I, but I'm the same person. And the same thing applies when it comes to um, God's relationship with us. He wants an intimate relationship on all of those aspects. He's the same person, but he reveals himself in multiple ways. He's our teacher, he's our master, our Lord, he's our friend, he's our father, he's our creator, he's everything to us. Um, and that's what it means to be baptized in the Holy Spirit as well. He teaches us the, mo uh, the uh, he teaches us many aspects of who he is. There's also a idea of other doctrines or uh, denominations. They don't believe in healing or rising from the dead, where we 
as assemblies of God do believe that, that we can lay hands, that we can pray in tongues. That is a sign that you are baptized in the Holy Spirit when you can pray in tongues. And laying on the hands or just praying or interceding prayers for others. There's just this whole variety of gifts that God gives his followers, his children, his disciples, his apostles, prophets, and teachers of, you know, using their, their talents and their gifts as Peter was a fisher, but God used him to fish for men, so on and so forth. And it just goes on and on and on, you know, because in the world that we live in, there's so much theology, and some could be right. There's some good theology, and there's some bad theology. So when it means to be Pentecostal, what we mean, we're basically meaning that it's no longer us living our lives, but it's God living through us, making the choices for us, if and only if we surrender our will, our wisdom, our understanding, our entire lives, then we are submerged in the Spirit. We are baptized, soaked, drenched, and following the leading of Jesus. Thank you for watching and listening. God bless.